Mention the word Nazi and you'll get several different responses. You'll hear fear, hate, discrimination, anti-Semitism, murder, and probably most common, evil. Many of these classifications, even those held by those that have never had a history lesson about the Nazis, are correct. To understand where these classifications come from and to learn about what actually happened, let's go back to 1933 to the rise of the Third Reich. On January 30th of 1933, Adolf Hitler, a name that is now synonymous with pure evil, was appointed Chancellor of Germany. Within a month's time, and immediately following a mysterious fire at the Reichstag, the Parliament Building, the government issued a decree completely suspending civil rights for its citizens and enacting a state of emergency that allowed the government to act without Parliament. Hitler began to move the country's policies to be in line with the Nazi ideals. The Nazis took over the economy, education, law, and culture, including religion. And when Paul von Hindenburg, who was the president of Germany, died in August of 1934, Hitler, der Führer, the head of the Nazi party, assumed the role of president. But he also kept the role of chancellor, essentially crowning himself dictator and granting himself unlimited power. The German secret police called the Gestapo and the elite guard of the Nazi state, Heinrich Himmler's Schutzstaffel, also called the SS, held the population in the grip of complete fear. Any criticism of the Nazi government or the leaders in it was suppressed. Hate, discrimination, and anti-Semitism were unleashed upon the region. It was in March of 1933 that the first concentration camp opened. Dachau was established by Heinrich Himmler as a camp for political prisoners. It operated with the prisoners being told the false pretense that Arbeit macht frei, work will set you free. The camp didn't hold only political prisoners for very long. The Nazis began filling the camp with communists, democrats, trade unionists, religious groups like the Jehovah's Witnesses, other asocials including gypsies and homosexuals, and even regular criminals. Later, following Kristallnacht, the night of the broken glass, which happened on November 9th and 10th, 1938, the camp was filled with 10,000 Jews in addition to the others that were already occupying the camp. Dachau had grown so much that in early 1937, the SS used the prisoner labor to construct new barracks that filled the area. They built roads, they dug pits, some of which became their own graves. They drained marshes and built stockpiles of armaments for the German army. In many ways, Dachau was the model camp for the Nazis. And as more camps were built, Dachau led the way in fierceness and efficiency. When the Nazis started World War II in September of 1939, invading Poland, accommodating for the country's now divided attentions, the policies, especially those surrounding racial inferiority, became much more aggressive. Jews and other racially alienated groups were excluded entirely from the German economy, expelled in mass numbers, or sent to camps as prisoners, including not only men, but women and children as well. Following the Kristallnacht pogroms, or riots, approximately 30,000 Jewish males nationwide were arrested and sent to concentration camps like Dachau, Buchenwald, Sachsenhausen, and others, solely for the reason that they were Jewish. Jews were segregated from the rest of the population, even marked with an armband or a patch labeling them as Juden, Jews. Entire families of Jews were herded into ghettos, taken from their homes and forced to leave all their belongings behind. The living conditions were horrendous in the ghettos. Large numbers of people were forced into very small areas, and little to no food was provided. For instance, the Warsaw Ghetto documented more than 400,000 Jews residing in an area approximately 1.3 square miles, in nearly complete desolation. Of course, the ghettos were enclosed, no one was allowed to leave, and the walls protected with lethal force by the SS. More than 1,000 such ghettos were established in Nazi-controlled areas. This intensification of their Aryanization policies ultimately led to the Endoslung der Judenfrage, the final answer to the Jewish question, as it's more commonly called, the final solution. It was the mass genocide of the Jewish people. The ghettos overflowed, and without a long-term solution to keep the Jews segregated, Hitler decided to kill them all. The concentration camps became murder factories. 
Some of the most notorious camps were Auschwitz, Birkenau, Buchenwald, Treblinka, Chelm, Lublin, and of course Dachau. Though there were more than 20,000 concentration camps spread throughout Europe, Jewish men, women, children, soldiers, prisoners, and anyone that disagreed with the Nazi agenda were sent to die. Many would die working to death in the work camps, and millions were executed by the Nazis in gas chambers or shot and left to die in mass graves. Birkenau, at its peak, was gassing up to 6,000 Jews each day. Many were cremated, and their ashes either discarded or delivered with malice to the surviving family of the cremated person, along with the identifying information such as a wedding ring, gold teeth, etc. This terrible time of segregation, hatred, and dehumanization of the Jews and many other groups has come to be known as the Holocaust. By the time the Nazis were defeated and the camps liberated, more than 12 million people had been killed by the Nazis. The largest group was the European Jews, who lost six million of their lives. Around three-fourths of the European Jews that were alive before the beginning of the Third Reich. Following the Holocaust, Protestant pastor Martin Niemüller revisited Dachau, where he himself had been imprisoned for four years, and he gave a poignant statement about the Nazi rule and how the population, including himself, should have done more to help the victims of the Nazis. He said, first they came for the communists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a communist. And then they came for the incurably sick, but I didn't speak out because I wasn't incurably sick. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a Jew. And then they came for the Catholics, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't Catholic. But then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me.